So it is better to ask Allah directly, for example, grant me such and such. But if you ask someone who's living, a living sheikh or a living mother, can you ask them, make dua for me? Yeah, you can. Your mother especially. But isn't it better to go to Allah directly? You can. But at the same time, the mother's dua, you know yourself, a mother's dua is very, very, very beneficial. If a mother makes dua for you while she's alive, your mother, look bro, our mother's dua reaches us, mashallah, most of the time. You feel me? So your mother today, she will make you say, oh, you do it. mom, make dua for you. Your mom will make dua for you. But if my mom's dead, if my mom is dead and she's in her grave, and I ask my mom why she's dead in her grave, then uh, there's a problem with that, brother. But if my mom is alive, moms make dua for us every day. Like, you go to your mom, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, bro, he, what did he say? He said, the Jannah is in between uh, our mother's feet, right? Mm -hmm. Jannah is in our mother's feet. It's beneath our mother's feet. The Prophet said this, no? Despite the fact that's a weak hadith, Meaning, you would use this hadith, which is graded as a weak hadith, to substantiate your belief that it is okay to ask your mother, as opposed to asking Allah, which you're saying is a creedal issue. This is a matter of aqidah. You would use that for asking your mom when you can ask Allah directly? No, you ask Allah directly is even better. But at the same time, your mother's dua is very important. You understand me, brother? How about a dua of a prophet? I mean, if the Prophet is alive, the Prophet is alive. Does the Quran not say, do not say the shuhada are dead? Surely they are living? I mean, does it say we, we could ask them to ask for Allah? Because that's what the Christians would do. That's how the Christians turn into shirk, bro. That's how, that's how, look, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tried his best to, to appear human, did he not? What the Christians would do is they would worship the person directly. And, and For example, saying, O oh, Saint Benedict, grant me children. Or saying, O oh, Saint Benedict, forgive me for my sins. That's what the Christians would do. Okay, so that's, that's the reason why Islam is avoiding all of this. You understand me? Because the Prophet Sallallahu yeah, Alaihi he was trying to appear as human as possible to the Ummah. Right? So the Prophet وسلم, even though he is righteous and he is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's best creation, I am not doubting that, and we follow him and we respect him and we love him, at the same time, we're not trying to fall into the same mistake and the same trap that the Christians fell into, which they turned a Nabi into a God. You understand me, my brother? But Allah if the companions did it, then would you call the companions mushriks? I mean, the companions as well were corrected, though. They were corrected and they did do it. There were some companions, they, they, there were some instances where companions, they, they did mistakes where they did... I think we can agree committing shirk is not just a mere mistake. That would be an abhorrency. But okay. you're saying after all of that learning with the Prophet wasalam, Umar ibn Khattab did not know how to differentiate between Iman and shirk. So what did Umar ibn Khattab do? Are you not familiar? That's why I asked you. The companions, if the companions in mass could all fall into shirk, then what does that say for us low creations? I mean, there's even less of a chance for the Muslim nation to succeed. Is Umar ibn Khattab human? Yes, he's a human, but he's also a wali is of he, Allah. Is he, is he infallible? No, but I want to ask you a question. Is he perfect? Of course he's fallible. He can make mistakes. Okay, so he's fallible, right? Who corrected him? Exactly. Uh, that's what I want to know. For me. Well, what you're saying is, now you're saying companions committed shirk in mass, right? In, and then, by accident, by accident. how do you accidentally commit shirk? I mean, brother, if you don't understand what you're doing at that time... How would the Khalifa of Allah, yani the greatest bunch of Muslims, not know to differentiate between Iman and Kufr? Oh, so is there no instances where Sahabas made mistakes? Where the senior companions just committed shirk? That never happened. And if no, it did... Not then you'd have to come up with the evidence where they committed shirk and then they were corrected. When it came, when it came, we're talking about Umar ibn Khattab, right? Right. Okay, so you said that Umar ibn Khattab, you mentioned Umar ibn Khattab, right? Okay. So I want to know what you're talking about. So I just want to know, like, an example of what you was talking about when you, when you mentioned it. 
Well, I could mention an example, but now what you're saying is a whole other claim. You're saying that the companions committed shirk and they were corrected. I never, I never said that, boy. You said, you mentioned Umar ibn Khattab, right? Yes. I said the, the companions, they're not infallible. Correct, right? correct. They, they can make perfect. mistakes. That's, that's, that, was my, that was my claim. I never said they committed shirk. I never brought shirk on my mom. In our religion, it's well documented that the awliya do not commit shirk. Okay, so they did not commit shirk, right? Yes, they're not infallible. Awliya can commit sins, major sins at that, but awliya don't just fall into shirk left, right, and center. I, ne I never said they did. Well, you said they were corrected. No, but I said, were they not corrected when you said something? I said, would they? I asked you, it was a question, it was not an answer. They were not corrected because it was not shirk. Okay, so I want to ask you a question then again. Yeah? So when you said Umar ibn Khattab, when you mentioned him, right? You said something about Umar ibn Khattab, but you did not explain. Yeah. Okay. I want to ask you a question. When you mentioned Umar ibn Khattab, what was, why did you mention it? Because this is mentioned in Fathul Bari, in the second right. volume. And also, it is narrated by Al Hafiz Abu Bakr Al Bayhaqi from the route of Malik Ad Dar that the people were inflicted with a drought at the time of Umar ibn Khattab. And so a man came to the grave of the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, seek the rain for your nation, for certainly they are perishing due to this drought. Then the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to him in the dream and said, Go to Umar ibn Khattab and pass my salam to him from me and inform him that they will be irrigated. You know, irrigated mean the rain will come. And say to him, endeavor, endeavor. And so the man informed Umar and so Umar said, Ya Rabbi, I do not fall short except what I am unable to do. And Al Hafiz ibn Kathir narrated this and said immediately afterwards, this is an authentic chain of narration. Well, I don't see anything wrong with that. I told you, I don't, I don't think that's shit. So they said, Ya Rasulullah, seek the rain for your nation. Yeah, I don't think that's shit. While he was in his grave. I mean, I mean, at the same time, yeah, but I don't think that's shit. So exactly. Uh, they went to a person who is no longer alive in a dunya. The Prophet ﷺ is in the barzakh. And then this companion said, Ya Rasulullah, seek the rain for your nation. Right. And then the person had a dream in which the Prophet of Allah ﷺ said, Go to Umar, send him my salam, assalamu alaikum, and inform him that you should be endeavoring, endeavor. And this was explicitly mentioned as authentic, not just by Ibn Kathir, but it was also mentioned by Ibn Hajr al-Asqalani. And Ibn Abu Shayba narrated it with an authentic chain of narration from Abi Salih, from Malik al-Dar as well. MashaAllah. So the Prophet ﷺ was not alive. The people asked him while he was in his grave and the people benefited. MashaAllah. So, so okay, so that shows you the Prophet the significance of the Prophet right? There you are. No, no, definitely. Okay, cool. My, where, where I'm coming from is my great grandfather that died 200 years ago, right? Mm hmm. He's nowhere near the Prophet. Do you agree? Of course. Well, now my family members are going to his tomb, are asking him, for example, the same thing that the, the, the Sahaba asked the Prophet when he was in his grave. How about if your grandfather was a shaheed? Well, I don't know how he died. He died 300 years ago. You feel me? And so then you rush to charge with shirk, something that you're not sure of. Even if he's a shaheed, look, even if you're a shaheed and he died in war, yeah? What significance does that have? Because in Al Quran, Allah explicitly mentions do not say the shuhada are dead. Surely they are living. Okay, so in that context as well, because you're saying it in a literal manner, right? Mm -hmm. That's like you saying, if we're saying it in a literal manner, then that means my grandfather, my great grandfather did not die, he was a shit. The me, thing is, if, right? you, if you grew up in the West, I don't know where you grew up, then you consume too much TV, you spend too much time with the non Muslims, you would think that death is an annihilation. It is a transfer from one realm, i.e., a dunya to the next realm, i.e. a barzakh. You've heard of companions, they were seen worshipping in their grave. There are many narrations of awliya worshipping in their graves. You hear stories where the Prophet benefited from deceased people. 
you hear stories of how the prophets السلام, they prayed behind Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in Masjid al-Aqsa and so the issue is if you ask a deceased person to forgive me of my sins that's shirk because Allah is the only one who forgives or if you ask the deceased person to grant me something then surely this is shirk because only Allah is the one who provides the rizq but if you ask the present person like your mother or the absent yet living person like someone across the country via phone or via letter for help you are not relying on Allah you're asking a creation and if you ask a prophet while he's alive or while he's in his grave it's not shirk but the moment it is a non-profit it becomes shirk where in the religion does it say that because what the prophet السلام, and the shuhada both have in common is that they are alive in their grave and they benefit the prophet والسلام, said surely my life is good for you and my death is good for you now but at the same time as, as muslims are we not are we not taught the tawheed are we not taught that the dead cannot benefit us only allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone can okay so if only allah can benefit you then why do you go to your mom? Because that is a benefit. At the same time, when I go to my mom, who does she go to? Who does she go to? Who does she, who does she pray for? Who does she, who does she, who does she ask it? She prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Exactly. So, and likewise, if you go to the grave of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam also prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How long did it, how long, when it came to Tawheed, how long did did the Prophet sallallahu take to teach the Sahabas about Tawheed? He taught them throughout his whole life, but for the first 13 years, he exclusively taught the creed, the Tawheed, exactly. And yeah. after he died, Umar ibn Khattab, Ibn Abbas, because in other narrations, Umar, he was thinking, he said, let me ask someone from the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because right. despite Umar having a higher status than Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas is related to the Prophet alayhi salam, and there's a special merit and barakah in that. And so he asked Ibn Abbas, and Ibn Abbas said, Ya Rasulullah, ask Allah to give us the rain. Right. And also, the evidence for the validity of tawassul by the Prophets and the pious is the hadith narrated from the route of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri where he said what means if someone left his house to go to the prayer and he said ya allah i ask you by the right of those who ask you and by the right of this walking of mine you could have just said ya allah grant me such and such but you're asking allah by the right of those who ask him yani the other righteous people who ask allah the prophets right. and the pious are among those who ask allah so it so is lawful to make tawassul by them so the, prophet, so the prophet is the only the prophet are the only dead that can hear the living, right? No, because in the Quran it explicitly mentions do not say the shuhada are dead, they are living. Does it say in the Quran or the hadith that the shuhada can hear us? What do you mean? Did you not see the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he mm. would be addressing certain people in their graves? And Umar said, can they hear you? And Ya Rasulullah, can they hear you? Because he wasn't knowledgeable about this particular mas'ala. They hear the Rasulullah, but can they hear us? That's the question. So what restricts this hadith to mean that only they can hear the Rasul alayhi salam because the Prophet alayhi no salam no He responded to Umar though. He responded to Umar by saying they can hear you just as you're hearing me So he was addressing Umar now No, but at the same time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala literally distincted that the living and the dead are not the same They're not so the same So when did the shahad look bro? The, the dead and the living are not the same you feel me so whether the shuhada or not the dead and the living are not the same and even in surah to al-fatir the living and the dead are not the same verily allah will make here whomever he wills but you cannot make those in the grave here so of, of course you're right allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did say that um what do you call it the, the shuhada are not dead they, but surely they are living right mm -hmm. But in the same Quran, in the same in the same Quran, in Surah Al-Fatir, what did Allah Subhanahu wa Taala say? The living and the dead are not the same. Verily, Allah will make here whomever, whomever He wills, but you cannot make those in the grave here. And verily, in Surah, in Surah al naml 2780, verily you cannot make the dead here the cool when they turn away. So you're saying it's okay if the deceased person is a prophet? Allah, I can't speak for that. But you acknowledged that earlier. My uncle, 
did they mean to my great grandfather? Yeah, I'm talking about my great grandfather. I'm not talking about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam back me. I'm talking about my great 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 grandfather, right? He couldn't hear us. He couldn't hear me. And and and, and clearly it stays here in the surahs, in the two surahs. You feel me? Al Fatir and Al Naman. Okay. So do you know which scholars explain those verses in the way you explain them? Well, it says here, brother, the way, the way, uh, uh, what do you call it? It says here, yeah, the deceased can no longer perform good deeds because their term has ended. The only way for a person to earn good deeds after death is ongoing charity, leaving behind knowledge in books and lectures, or having righteous prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a human dies, his deeds end except for free. Ongoing charity, beneficial knowledge, or righteous child or praise for him. Sahih Muslim. You understand me, my brother? So meaning, where in the hadith or the Quran, where in the sunnah of the Quran does it say that the dead can hear us? Well, again, I gave one example because I'm going step by step to the Prophet. I'm talking about the dead, I'm talking about the actual dead. I'm not talking about the Prophet. The Prophet is distinct to me and you. When we die, right? But he died. Are you saying that we buried a living person? When we say he died, yeah, he died. Of course he died. But I'm talking about me and you. We're not the prophets. We're not prophets. We're not messengers, right? So your job now is to find a religious text that says you can only ask the prophets, but you cannot ask the shuhada right. or the well, awliya. I've never asked the prophet for anything. Let me tell you the truth. But Omar did it. In my years of living here, in my years of living. I have never asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam I've never said Ya Nabi I've never said that I've did Salih Ala Nabi I prayed for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam You understand me? But I've never said Ya Nabi help me I've never did that You understand me my brother? I don't think my family did that I don't think anybody that I know have did this You understand me? I don't even think that, I don't know the scholars that did this You find it, scholars it, that did this uh -huh. Then you can, you can You can correct me But as, as the 27 years that I've been living Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, he used to go to the grave of Imam Ashafi, his teacher, right. rahmatullah alayhi, and he would right. make tawassul by him. And if you want to talk about one of the greatest scholars, we're talking about Umar ibn al-Khattab. He's right. a scholar. In fact, he was a mushtahid mutlaq. Of course, of course. So when he said, Ya Muhammad, and Ibn Abbas, and Bilal ibn Harith, and all these people were present, they just watched shirk unfold. And no one said anything. I'll trust me, when it comes to, when it comes to that situation, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make. I'm not gonna go into sin and talk about something when I don't know about. It. Does that make sense to you? If I say to you they committed shirk, then and they, they haven't, then where do I fall into? I fall into grave sin, right? You said prophets are special. Regular people can't hear. They're not regular people. The prophet. We know the prophets are not regular people. They have a difference. You understand me? People so, can hear in the grave as well. It literally, bro, okay, so it literally says here right now, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yeah, when a person dies, his deeds ends, meaning, except three things, ongoing charity, beneficial knowledge, or righteous child of praise for him, right? Hold on, hold on, so I'm trying to understand you. So let's put the prophets to the side for a minute. You're saying if you speak to a Muslim in his grave, he can't hear you? Allah, yeah. If but the Prophet Alaihi Wasallam said so. Allah, yeah, but me, me saying, look, when a, when a person other than a prophet is dead, yeah, and Allah, yeah, okay, so when a person dies in their company, I'm talking about a normal human being, I'm talking about like us, me and you today, right? When a person dies in their company, we do not know where they are, right? We know, we know they're dead, you feel me? But we do not know how Allah subhanahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how he's judging. We don't know if this person is righteous, we don't know what this person has done in life. We don't uh -huh. know if this person is a good person. We only know this person, how we knew him in this dunya. This person to us, he was a good person, but Allah Ya'alam how he is in the eyes of Allah. We do not know, right? Because the thing is, you keep avoiding every question I'm posing to you. If you saw that he lived and died as a Muslim, then he is a Muslim. And the Prophet wasallam mentioned in the hadith narrated by Ibn Abbas, which means there is not one of you that passes by the grave of his fellow believer that he knew in the dunya, and he gives him the salam, except that he would know him and return his salam. And this is narrated by Ibn Abdul Bar and Abdul Haq, and it was deemed authentic. Yes. Also, Bukhari Muslim narrated from the Rouse of Anas from the Prophet وسلم, that he said, which means, certainly, the slave, if he put, yani if he is put in his grave, 
and his companions turn away from him, he will surely hear the footsteps of their sandals as they leave. So that verse you mentioned in Surah Al-Naml, I think it was the 80th verse, where you said, Ya Muhammad, you cannot make the dead hear. It likens the blasphemers to the dead. It does not mean the dead cannot hear. Because there are several pieces of evidence proving the dead do hear. Yani, this is symbolic, this is a metaphor, referring to the kuffar as dead. Because then what you just said is the Prophet in numerous hadith, Umar ibn al-Khattab, in numerous hadith, Ibn Abbas, Bilal ibn al-Harith, and all the companions that were present, they all contradicted the Qur'an. Right. And you should know that the Prophets are alive in their graves and their bodies do not decay. Because had that been the case, how did the Prophet get the benefit from Musa from reducing the prayers from 50 down to 5? 100%, I believe in it. So the Prophet was, he wasn't talking about prophets, shuhada, awliya, ulama. He said, your fellow Muslim that you knew in this dunya, if you say salam to him and he knows you, he would return his salam. Okay, sorry, go on, continue. My bad. So that's the end of it. Because first, you acknowledge that Umar ibn Khattab, or rather you said, Umar ibn Khattab, or his companions, they made mistakes and they were corrected. And I said, well, where is it narrated? They made the mistake of shirk and they were corrected. And then you were humble enough and you said you don't know. Marhaba. So then you have to have an answer when we talk about the hadith narrated in Fathul Bari by Ibn Hajj al-Asqalani in volume 2 where Umar ibn Khattab, he was told by a companion, Ya Rasulullah, ask Allah to grant us the rain. Did Umar charge him with shirk? Did Ibn Abbas charge him with shirk? Was Bilal ibn al-Hajj charged with shirk? No one charged with shirk. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ came to them in the dream and said, Endeavor, endeavor. Sure. And in this hadith of Ibn Abbas, from the Prophet ﷺ, which is narrated by Ibn Abdul Bar and Abdul Haq, it is deemed as authentic, where if you pass by the grave of your fellow Muslim, you say, Assalamu alaikum, they'll say, Wa alaikum salam. So that's just a regular Muslim who died in the dunya. How about a shaheed? Like Allah referred to them in the Quran, they're alive in their grave. Yani, it is not an annihilation, your soul is present. And the deed stopped for the person, unless, like you said, they did a sadaqatul jariyah, they have a child that worships for them. But these awliya, when they're doing worship in their grave, it's because they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because they actually enjoy it. While they're waiting in their grave, they want to do something they enjoy, i.e., the salah. So, as a salaf, you're salaf, I follow the salaf of salihin, of course. Okay, so. Without uh, shirk, right? Yes, and shirk is to associate partners with Allah, i.e. to ask other than Allah, for example, to answer the dua. Because if you think the Prophet ﷺ will answer your dua, then you are gravely mistaken, so, no pun so, intended. So basically, going to a grave, rather than seeking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah, would there not be a, a violation of tawheed? So then that's what I was saying. Then you would be saying Umar ibn Khattab violated the Tawheed, Bilal ibn Harith, Ibn Abbas, and all those who were present. Or in the time of Abdullah ibn Umar when he had a paralysis in his leg, and he was told, say the name of the one who you love the most. And he said, Ya Muhammad. And Ibn Taymiyyah put this in his book, Kalimut Tayyib, the good words. Yeah, and he said this was a good word to say, to say Ya Muhammad. So this is, this is, I'm not going to lie, uh, me personally, brother, um, like I told you, in certain things I'm not knowledgeable, right? For example, yeah? So there's a lot of things that contradict. In Tawheed, we are told to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala solely. You feel me? I've never asked the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for any help. You just said you asked your mother to ask no, Allah. Look, look, when my mother, I've never, look, my mother, she prays for me. And if I ask my mother to pray for me, it's like, hoi idu'e, yeah? And my mother is alive. You understand me? So my mom, look, I believe that you said it's a weak hadith. You said this is a weak hadith, right? Well, it's not just me. I mean, this is the saying that Jannah is under your mother's feet. But this is what you said. You can bring evidence, I assume. You understand me? I'm not saying you can't bring, bring evidence. Okay. But I assume you can bring evidence. Okay. So you can, you can correct me. I'm your only human. You feel okay. me? So, and I ask my mom, pray for me. Things go well. There's things going on in my life, mom. I'm going through things, please pray for me. Whoa, why don't you just go to Allah directly? 100% yes. But me, at that time, I'm thinking, my mom, like me personally, I'm believing my mom, 
You know what your mom is in that instance? Your mom is a sabab. Just like Allah is the only one who cures. But you are not committing shirk if you take a Tylenol. Or better yet, if you go to a doctor. Or better yet, you read into a book authored by a dead doctor. Right. Because so long as you are fully aware and cognizant that it is Allah who cures, and these are the means, and this is not shirk. Because also, the Prophet ﷺ taught us, when you are traveling, as a traveler, your dua is readily answered. And so you can ask the traveler for dua, whether it's through the phone or before he travels. I believe you can ask somebody, brother, make dua for me, my family side, you know what I mean? There's brothers that come to the mosque, brother, I'm going through hardship, brother, make dua for me. Yeah, this I mean. So when it comes to that situation, brother, the brother's alive and he can make dua for you. Clearly, if somebody's alive, they can make dua for me because they're alive. You understand me? If somebody's dead, they couldn't hear me. That's what I believe. If I pass away, I couldn't hear you more than You understand me? This person who went to the grave and said, Ya Rasulullah, seek the rain for your nation, for certainly they are perishing, and it was none other than Bilal ibn al Harith. And Ibn Kathir authenticated it. Okay, let's say someone said he made a mistake, he committed shirk. Right. Then he went to Umar and told Umar, the Prophet السلام, came to me in the dream and said to send his salam to you. And to inform all of you guys that our land will be irrigated, the rain will come. Yani because the Prophet السلام, is asking Allah. Yani the Prophet's making this dua. السلام, and so what did Umar say? Did he not condemn him? Did Umar fall short in bidding the good and forbidding the evil? La, he said, Oh my Lord, I do not fall short except in what I am unable to do. Sorry. Now, the hadith scholars, out of mercy for the Muslims, they wouldn't have a hadith that is promoting shirk. And not leave that in their commentary. In fact, Ibn Kathir, who's a hafiz, said that this is authentic. Of course, Umar is a very respectable khalifa. Right. And, and by the way, if a khalifa commits shirk, if a khalifa commits shirk, aywa. So how come the Muslims were cowards and they didn't revolt against Umar for allowing the shirk? In another narration though, the one in Fatwa al-Bari, Umar went to Ibn Abbas and said, seek the rain. Yani, they're facilitating, they're continuing this chain of supposed shirk as the Wahhabis would call it. The Wahhabis, the Wahhabis are the same ones that said, we're going to go to Jannah by killing Umar. La hawla wa la quwata la billah. Yeah, I'm lying. I'm lying. They're the same ones that killed Umar and they thought they were going to go with Jennifer. So I don't understand this, brother. I know I am 100% against the Qawarish, but at the same time, brother, yeah, Islam, the core belief of Islam is Tawheed, right? Mm -hmm. That's the creed. So Tawheed is what I am talking about. Tawheed is what I am trying to like, illustrate right now. Does that make sense, brother? You know what would be considered breaching Tawheed? Because Tawheed is to know the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If someone applies or attributes one of the attributes of God to a creation, like for example to say Abdul Qadir Jailani or the Prophet والسلام, is all hearing, all seeing, no beginning, no end. Exactly. This is explicit kufr, right? Exactly. Oh, that's, okay, so now me and you are on the same path. Right? Aywa, but whether the Prophet is alive, he hears, but he's not all hearing. And if the Prophet is dead, exactly. he hears, but he's not all hearing. He's not the all moment hearing. you exactly. give an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a creation, even if it's right. khayru khalkillahi himself, sallallahu alayhi right. wa sallam, then this is where the tawheed becomes breached. But yeah, asking right. someone to help you, because the Prophet yeah. alayhi salam said also, if you find yourself destitute in the desert, and you need help, then call out and say, O oh, slaves of Allah, help me, right. help me. And the slaves of Allah here is referring to the angels. So Malara, that's where me and you, my river and your river comes and connects. Does that make sense? When you, as soon as you said that, that's my, that's when me and you connected. Because mm -hmm. that's what I believe too. What you just said right now. So now we're on the right path. We cannot deny and just ignore the fact that Bilal ibn al-Harith. You know Bilal ibn al-Harith? No, I do not know the Sahaba. You never heard of Bilal ibn al-Harith? So Bilal ibn al-Harith 
is the one who went to the grave. MashaAllah. Ameen. And he's the one who said, Ya Muhammad. So his name was Bilal ibn Harif. Okay. Okay. Yani, what I would find strange is no hadith scholar ever said Bilal or Umar or Ibn Abbas or none of these facilitators could be the shirk. Yani, no one corrected them. I've never heard of that as well. I'm not gonna lie. I've never heard of that. That they commit shirk. Exactly, because saying, Yani, asking the Prophet while he's in his grave is not shirk. Because he said, and my death is good for you. And the Prophet ﷺ said, my life is good for you and my death is good for you. As for my death, there is an angel that presents your deeds to me. Yani the deeds of the nation of Muhammad ﷺ. And if I see goodness, I praise Allah. And if I see sin or shortcoming, then I make istighfar for you. So the Prophet ﷺ, he makes dua for us. He asks Allah to forgive us. In fact, on Fridays, isn't it recommended per the hadith corpus to say Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah or Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad and it's delivered to him because he hears. And Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, while the Prophet alayhi salam was alive, he benefited from someone who was dead, Musa alayhi salam, because they could hear each other and converse. Yeah, they can. And, and if you want to take everything literally, then why did these dead prophets pray behind Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? I believe in that. So, okay. I believe in that. MashaAllah. I'm not against that. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he visited him once he was, he was alive. Moreover, yeah. it was narrated by a tabari that yeah. Prophet Adam alayhi salam, he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by yeah. Muhammad. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him, Why did you make dua by Muhammad? And Allah knows the answer. Yeah. Just like when Allah was asked by the angels, Why are you creating them? They're going to be evil vice doers who are committing murder. Yeah. Yeah, they weren't objecting to Allah. They know that Allah She's is wise. Exactly. So when yeah. Prophet Adam salam, asked by Muhammad, salam, he said, Because I saw in your arsh, that his name is next to your name, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, and you would not put the name of someone next to your name unless they had a high merit. So he made dua by Muhammad before Muhammad was even born. Forget even dead, he was not even born. So did Adam commit shirk? No. Same way that Malaika didn't commit shirk when they prostrated for Adam. Aywa. But that's also because in their laws, prostrating to someone was not haram. Even in the laws of Musa, it was not haram to prostrate to someone out of respect. The, will of Allah. Anyway, the laws change time after time, right? Mm -hmm. But the belief in Allah, the Tawheed does not change. Because had the Tawheed changed, that means Allah changes. And change is an attribute of the creation, not the creator. Right. So, so long as you do not give an attribute of Allah, yani like right. for him being all forgiving or the forgiver, Yani he's a ghafoor rahim If you don't give that to a creation, you're safe. The moment you think Abdul Qadir Jailani or any Somali Shaykh, or even if he's alive, you think he can forgive you? Because this is what the Christians did. They believed their repentance was only valid through their respective religious authorities. So, Molana, the way. Okay, so this conversation started off with Somali, right? And my great grandfather that passed away, right? Mm -hmm. Now, my great grandfather was a, was a, was a Shaykh. Was a Sufi um, Molana. Mm -hmm. Molana was uh, was it um, Moli? Not Moli stuff like it was. Uh, there's a I don't know. He has a different. Was, I can't remember what he was called. Like a Murabbi. He has a name. Yes, yeah, Murabbi. This yeah, I think it's something similar to. That. Um, okay, so what they do is yeah, which is shirk, which I believe is shirk, brother. Yeah, well, you can correct me on it. Yeah, brother. We need rain. Our animals are dying. Is that not shirk? 
is asking Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jailani to ask Allah for rain and asking the Prophet to ask Allah for rain. Okay, but Sheikh Jailani cannot ask me and you just illustrated. Yeah? He can't make dua? How can Sheikh Jailani make dua, bro? Because the awliya are also alive in their graves. Awliya? Sheikh Jailani is not awliya. Abdul Qadir Jailani is not a wali? What, what do you mean wali? Yani, a wali is the singular form of awliya. Awliya is plural. Okay, so in your definition, what's awliya? It's not my definition. You can find this in the books of the Salaf al Salihin. In Al Ayn Al Qamus. The wali is the one who fulfills all of the obligations consistently. How do you know? How do you know Sheikh Jailani did that? He came after the Prophet right? Are there no awliya after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? For sure there's awliya after the Prophet alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For sure. It must be. But we, at the same time, Sheikh Jailani, yeah, in the history books, yeah, mm -hmm. Sheikh Jailani was not, was he not a Shia? Abdul Qadir Jailani? He was a Hanbali. Are you kidding me? Was he born a Hanbali? He was not a Shia, not at all. I have never even heard someone say that in my life. Even the Wahhabis don't say that about him. Ibn Taymiyyah, he even said, I am Qadiri in Tariqah. And he followed Abdul Qadir Jailani's Tariqah. He was, <laughs> no, Ibn, Abdul Qadir Jailani was not a Shia whatsoever. Okay, so he was, he was, he was the, um, it says here, he was the Sufi leader who was the eponym of the Qadriya, one of the oldest Sufis, or Sufi order. Yeah, the, the, Qadriya, the right? oldest Sufi order, correct. Which is, very prevalent in, uh, in, Soma in Somalia, East Africa and West Africa. Hey, well. Including Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. He was born in Iran, he was Iranian. Okay. Uh, uh, Jilan. He was born in a place called Jilan. You know? Yeah. You know, he was born in Iran. Okay. She was named after, yeah, it was in Iran. That's where I got the shit out from. My bad. Okay, so. Okay, so I don't know where I got the Shia from. Astaghfirullah. May Allah, may Allah forgive me. You know, he was a very strict Hanbali scholar. He was not a Shia in any way. He wasn't Shia and then converted to Sunniism. Right. Okay, so, um. He was Sunni. It says denomination Sunni. Islam. Yeah, and this is documented in the textbooks of the scholars, Yanni. I know you're yeah, relying on the internet. He's a Hanbali scholar. Yeah, Hanbali, for sure. He was Hanbali. Okay, so yeah, mashallah. Okay, no, do you know what it is, my brother? Um, the thing is, look, mashallah, clearly I'm not Wahhabi. Mashallah, I'm not, I'm not Wahhabi. I do not take from Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. So long as you don't believe Allah sits or floats or that He has organs or no, metaphorical I don't, organs? I don't, that's physically, I don't know. Allah ya alam and I don't think so. I believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no limitations. No Allah limitations, Allah. no organs, no location. No, yeah, I don't believe in that. I don't, Allah, I, don't, I don't believe in that and I hope subhanahu wa ta'ala I'm correct when it comes to this. So see, the, the Muslim it, belief has to be that of conviction. No, no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not like us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not like us anyway. Hey, he's, not, he's not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot put our own attributes to describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hey, you can't do that. You feel me? So we cannot say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hands. We cannot say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a, a physical attributions the way human beings do. We do not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not the same has not have does not have the same physical limitations that us humans do or organs or whatnot. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need organs. Allah barik fikum. Allah has attributes, yeah. not organs. Well I, exactly so that's what I believe. Uh, that's what I believe. I don't believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs organs to do what he does. Alhamdulillah. That's what I believe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not like us. We need, we are, we are limited creation. We are creations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not. Um, he does not need what we need, what we have. You feel me? Okay. He created what we have. There you what? So, yeah, I do not believe in that. I do not believe in that. I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is different. Way different. I cannot, we cannot. Compare, that's what I believe basically. So, when the Wahhabis, when they say that, I don't understand that. Um, and I don't take from them, alhamdulillah. But at the same time, when it comes to the Sufis, I do have a problem with them. What you have a problem is with the goofy Sufis, Yani, those who made you kiss crusty, dry feet. They tried to, and I said no. And they tried to shut the. Shit up. 
And I said, no, I, I said, slap me. Wallahi. Bro, my, my own bro, I said, bro, slap me. I, I said, bro, you might as well just slap me now. I appreciate you uh, sharing your experience because oftentimes we will find in the Muslim community because someone has a bad experience with a ammu or a Sunday school teacher or a strict religious parent that they go off the deep end and that seems to be what you have done MashaAllah Some may say, well why talk about this? Why can't you just go directly to Allah? This is so confusing Just like you have social issues in your community I too face social issues If someone wants to uh, go directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is what's best but we mention and clarify the religious judgment so you don't unrightfully call someone a kafir or a mushrik or a mubtadi' because tawassul, tabarruk, istighatha is all throughout the horn of Africa those who say why do you talk about the Wahhabis our goal here is not to bash our goal is to clarify what the Muslims are confused about we don't talk about the Shia or the Jabariya, for example, or Christianity because their doctrine is not confusing the Muslims in the 21st century. We have people who say, don't talk about these things, let's talk about what unites us. What unites us is the Islamic literature, the Islamic academia, aqidah, fiqh, tafsir, tajweed, nahu, lugha, qira'a. Issa, so many different Islamic sciences and if someone wants to talk about Sirah, I applaud him. If someone wants to talk about Aqidah, I applaud him. Why am I talking about Isigatha with you today? Why am I talking to you about Tawassul today? Because we don't want people to unrightfully be takfeared. Ironically, the same people who say uh, we shouldn't call anyone kafir, they would say this is strange. You're worshipping the dead. So, would they say that all of Hadar, all of Ethiopia, all of Somalia, all of East Africa, all of Syria, Bangladesh, Malaysia, Maghrib, Tunus, Jazair, all of the Muslim lands, they're all engaged in shirk? Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu salam, the majority of his nation are mushriks? This is why we have to go back to Islamic education. You don't have to drop everything and go to Al-Azhar, ya Ahbabina. That's not the message. The message is, be an informed Muslim. I believe in that. Don't say, because my Sunday school teacher did this, or my grandfather did that, or because this mean guy said this, then I'm going to follow such and such. Because these same people who say, why are you talking about istighatha, why are you talking about Wahhabis, if someone throws a rock at me, am I not supposed to defend myself? If they throw a cinder block at you, or your son, or your daughter, am I not supposed to defend you? We have many adhkar, many dhikr, nasheeds, benedictions, hymns, whatever you want to call them. Some of you may be familiar with dua al-Mustafa. Ilahi yo daj wa zany ay khun Muhammad nabi barakati yu khun Barakat zal ba yu Muhammad hurmat be What does hurmat mean? By the status, by the blessings of Muhammad Ya Allah grant us such and such You could have asked Allah directly Ya Allah grant me such and such Here you're making tawassul You're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the blessings of Muhammad or in the famous Harari benediction, Salli ya Rabbi ala Muhammadin. Everyone knows this, the dhikri. Zahtana zahtang rahman ismi khabe, fadam zawballana habib kha khurmatbe. Habib kha khurmatbe, by the status of your beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's so many of God like this. Ya Rasulullahi, ya Habibullahi, khayru khalkillahi, sallallahu alayka. Sallallahu alayka. They're sending salah directly to the Prophet, not saying, Ya Allah, grant him salah wa salam. Alayka. This sounds a lot like the grammatical structure of what we say in salah. Assalamu alayka, ayyuhan nabiyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the salah, don't you say, Assalamu alayka. May peace and blessings be upon you, O Muhammad. Ya Rasulullah, O. Oh, Messenger of God, we're directing our speech to him. 
O oh Habibullahi, O oh the beloved or the exceptionally accepted one to Allah, we're directing our speech directly to Him. What would you say about the Harari Dhikri? And I know you may not know some of these, but this is all throughout the Horn of Africa. In Amine Nabi Aye. Diju Harat Inayaj, Allah Huzim al Hayaj, Amina Abshir Zayaj. Diju Harat Inayaj, who were the four ladies that came? It was narrated Lady Maryam. She visited Lady Amina. You know, Maryam, mother of Jesus Christ, alayhi salam. And Sarah, the wife of Ibrahim, alayhi salam. And Hajar, the mother of Ismail, alayhi salam. And Asiya, the wife of Fir'aun, la'amtullah alayhi. Amina abshir zayach. They're telling her, Abshir, rejoice. They're consoling her. They're congratulating her. Inayach marhabaye sayyidul bashir aye. Ambiyach abshir zaye. Ambiyach abshir zaye. Abshir. The root is the same as Bushra. Congratulations. Which Ambiya? Adam, Sheath, Idris, Nuh, Hud, Ibrahim, Ismail, Musa, Isa, alayhi musalam. Even when we do Khatm al Quran, Allahumma arhamna bi kiraatil Quran, wa akrimna bi karamatil Quran, wa adhilna al jannata bi shafaatil Quran, wa atina su'lana min al khairi bi hurmatil Quran. We're asking Allah after Khatm of the Quran. By our recitation of the Qur'an, by the karama of the Qur'an, by the blessings of the Qur'an, MashaAllah, by the status of the Qur'an. And again, addressing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam directly. Al-Fay sallallahu alayka ya Muhammad. Because these same people who say, don't do istighatha, don't do tawassul, don't do tabarruk, they call us mushrikeen. But we're not allowed to defend ourselves in what world? Ashraq al Badru alayna ya Muhammad. Anta mahbubun wa ghali ya Muhammad. Anta misbahu suduri nabi Muhammad. Anta shamsun anta badrun ya Muhammad. Anta nurun fawka nuri nabi Muhammad. Anta addressing him directly. Anta mahbubun wa ghali ya Muhammad. Anta misbahu suduri nabi Muhammad. These adhkar are directly speaking to Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. I thought he died. According to them he died. Why are we directing him? These adhkar were not just written by someone in his office in the masjid. These were written by fuqaha, awliya, salihin. There's another one. Salat salamat khaw goi to abor di leng ya Zod ad khad nabi leng salamat heo eid leng Ta khal ashabaj zo hi fotzi yu halben yani And he's also mentioning his his fervor for the ashabaj, the sahaba Aziyach hurmat be dil heo fadam bal leng Siddi karama be sheikh zina babakri by the status, we're not even talking about the Prophet ﷺ right now. We're talking about the Sahaba. By the status of the Sahaba, Dilheo, my sins, my shortcoming, my negligence, Fadam Balang, forgive my sins. Siddi Karama Be Sheikh Zina Babakri. By the Karama of Abu Bakr al Siddiq. MashaAllah. So many Athkar. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, Sumzo bin Tomadeyu, Zinu Luha Kalam bin Katabeyu, Zimalahayu Allah, Sayyid Musan Bayu, Hamsin Bazahabeyu, Hamistin Ashaleyu, Zimalahayu Allah. Our Master Musa alayhi salam. He told Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 50 prayers. Bazakha is too much. Hamisti na'ashalayu. Per his advice, we were able to get our prayers reduced to five prayers a day. Zimana hayu Allah. MashaAllah. Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa in this context, 
in this historical event known as Isra al Mi'raj, when he got our prayers reduced from 50 to 5 by supplicating to Allah, it was none other than by being benefited by someone who was dead, Musa alayhi salam. Right. MashaAllah. Rasulullah salam, or the one that's famously known as Awa Ayo salam. Takhala sahabatum Rasulullah salam. He fought the you halbain habibi salam. Muhammad the wo salam alayka. Aziyach hurmat be Rasulullah salam. Rahman fadam balling habibi salam. Aziyach hurmat be. By their status, yani these ashabachum. The one he had he fought for. The fervor, the yearning. Rahman fadam balling. So by their status, Rahman referring to Allah, Fadam Balang Habibi Salam. If someone wants to say Madina Tul Awliya, Harar is just riddled with shirki culture and customs and, and dhikr, uh, then I fear for such a person. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I do not fear shirk for my nation. And yet these people, they fear shirk for us. Wa Allahu Musta'ala.